I bought this original Zinger sewing machine table and I'm going to fix it up so that it looks like this. This was a tough restoration. Let me show you how I did it. I found this Zinger sewing machine table on Facebook Marketplace for 25 bucks and I instantly bought it because I know that these machines can sell for upwards of a thousand dollars on eBay. But currently it looks disgusting. It's covered in rust and caked on grease and also a lot of dirt. When I picked it up the owner said that it has been sitting outside in his garden for almost two years. It needs a restoration. But first I want to test it out and see if it works. Because of all the rust and dirt it's pretty hard to start but once it gets going it's going pretty nicely. So I think there is some potential. But time will tell. I want to keep as many of the original components as I can and I really don't want to replace anything. But the paint job needs to be stripped. So, what do you think? I think I can get this machine in working shape. Let's get started. There's a bunch of rust here, here, along here, all around here. So, I need to take the whole thing apart and clean every single component. Okay, so how the hell do you take apart something this big? Well, I really want to keep the frame intact as long as I can, so I want to remove all the little components first. And that includes the pedal, these little bits and bobs, and this thing, the flywheel, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So these four bolts are going to be the last to be removed. Let's start with the pedal. The pedal is fixed in place by two bolts. They are really hard to see because they are caked over in rust. So the first job is to clean off all that rust with a wire brush. Wow, now I can actually see where the bolt is. Okay, now to loosen it, I'm gonna spray a buttload of WD-40 onto it and let it soak in for about 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna get a breaker bar and break it open. Every single axle piece, so every bolt that has some movement to it, is fixed in place by this stop nut. This is a recurring theme that I forgot about in the middle of the project, so be on the lookout for that. This is going to be a huge mess up later. But these axles are really interesting. Since they didn't have any bearings, they used these cone-shaped axles. They go into cone-shaped holes and these make the axles turn. Now I'm just repeating the same thing on the other side, breaking open the nut and then removing it so that the pedal can come free. But it's not free yet. It is attached to this crank and to remove this crank I'm gonna clean it off first and this is the point where I realize this is the only component made out of wood on this cast iron machine. So I'm gonna take apart the axle. The axle is fixed in place by this locking pin and I'm going to remove it with some quick hammer strikes. And it was a real pain to remove because it is caked in rust. But eventually I got it. Here you can see a pretty good shot of how deteriorated the machine is. So all the paint is flaking off and all the rust has seeped into every crevice of the moving components. To make the movement of the machine smooth I'm gonna need to use a lot of lubricant. And that's the pedal removed. So, now we can move on to the flywheel. Next to the flywheel there are two belt guiders. These are small components that help the belt of the machine stay on track and stay tight. This also transfers the force that you put in from your leg to the sewing machine that is supposed to be on the table above this. The flywheel's movement is pretty simple. The energy from the pedal is transferred through this wooden crank, which turns the wheel, which spins the belt, and that transfers the energy to the sewing machine. It is fixed in place on two points, and this bolt secures the entire assembly in place. So let's clean it up and twist it out. And here comes the first of many mess ups during this project. I was trying my hardest to twist this bolt out, but it just wouldn't budge. So I sprayed it with WD-40, but that didn't help. 
I tried to knock it around and get it loose, but that didn't work either. I tried brute forcing it using a bar and that didn't work either. The bolt just skipped. But I forgot that there are stop nuts installed. I was worried about this side when I should have been worried about this side. I hope you can forgive me not seeing this bolt, as it was caked in so much old grease that it almost looked round and as part of the metal. So I scraped it off and hit it with a hammer a bunch of times and thankfully I managed to get it loose using this. Thank god that I didn't tighten it too much in the other direction with my previous attempts or I could have broken the bolt. And thankfully it twisted out real nicely and I managed to get the whole assembly out without too much trouble. One of the most impressive things I've found during this project is the complexity of all the cast iron parts. They are so perfectly cast that they are fed together to a millimeter precision. And in this next segment I'm going to have to battle this tight fit. The axle is press fit into the flywheel. I removed the bolt that keeps the assembly in place, but I need to hammer out the axle. And I'm having a lot of trouble with this. I've tried lubrication and also some heat treating. Here you can see me using a full wear tool, but that didn't work either. So I started thinking what could be the problem. And just as I thought, the axle mushroomed over. I was a bit too strong with my hammer strikes and this created a mushroom cap lip that doesn't allow me to remove the axle. But after grinding that off, I managed to get it out. So let's remove it from the crank and then we can move on to the whole frame. I just need to twist this bolt out and remove the two wooden followers. Here you can see this basket piece. This basket is placed on the frame and I thought that it was attached permanently, but thankfully I found a nut under all that dirt and managed to remove it. So hold on, only the frame remains. I thought that this would take way longer, but thankfully the frame took about 10 minutes to take apart and it was one of the simpler assemblies in the whole sewing machine leg. But I'm dreading the part that comes after this because I need to clean off every single piece of dust so that a good high quality paint can stick to the frame. And for that I'm going to be using a lot of solvents, a lot of angle grinder work and lots of wire brush work. And I need to put in a lot of elbow grease. After taking apart the whole machine I wanted to see how many components it had laid out on one table. So here you go. These are all the components, seriously, of the entire sewing machine table. I think that they look beautiful and they are masterpieces in casting work. Nowadays there are rarely any machines that can withstand a hundred years of neglect. So let's give it a shine it deserves. I need gloves, a wire brush, a sponge, a bunch of solvent and this mystery liquid. I have no idea what's in here, but it says paint stripper in Russian, so I'm gonna give it a go. I'm going to use a cold grease remover on this small part and check it out if it works. But unfortunately this wasn't strong enough, so let's try out the mystery liquid next. I made sure to remove any other chemicals that were on the surface so that they don't mix together and interact in a weird way. And here you can see me applying it with a brush. And this worked like a charm. It removed every single inch of paint that was on this small part. And I'm excited to try it out on all the other pieces too. But this wasn't so heavily coated in paint that I couldn't see the metal. So let's give it a bit harder challenge. The pedal is the most complex part in terms of casting and in terms of dirt because it was sitting in the ground for years. So let's see what it can do to it. I'm making sure to wipe on a really thick layer so that every single piece of paint will fall off. And after this I also shot a time-lapse of this solvent drying on the metal 
and I think that this will really surprise you. If you look close enough, you can see the paint kind of curling up and falling off from the metal. So this solvent seems to be doing the job. But I'm impatient and I'm gonna use a wire brush and get this thing clean as fast as I can. I'm starting to figure out why restoration really takes that long. Because this process, even though it may look fast to you, took about a week for me. Since this is just one part and this was just a test rub, I didn't manage to get every single piece of paint and since I <laughs> strive for perfection, I think that this won't be good enough. So after that, I'm going to hit this with the angle grinder with a wire brush attachment. But I didn't film that part because it would have taken way too long to film it and it would have made my camera really, really dirty. I got pretty good results just from using the solvent and this wire brush. I also filmed this really, really satisfying sequence where this is a flat part and I can just scrape it with a metal spatula and the paint kind of just falls off from the surface. I think this looks really cool and it was really satisfying to do too. By the way, I made sure to wear a mask, gloves and eye protection for the entire job. Man, I'm glad that that's done. It was such a hard job and it took almost a week to complete. My workshop is covered in dust and smells of chemicals and basically I need to give it a good scrub. But now onto the painting, which is going to be super satisfying. I hope you enjoy it. So I brought everything outside and now it's time to paint. As you can see, I managed to get down to bare metal on most of the parts, but there are still some imperfections left on the metal. So I didn't manage to get rid of every single piece of paint, but that's all right, because it was caked on so hard that it's not likely that it will rust underneath. And as you can see, here's one of those mistakes. But that's all right, because this is the most amount of time that I've spent on a project just sending. It took a week and that's all the time I'm going to give it. I'm taping off all little holes so that the paint won't get into the threads. I'm going to be applying two layers of paint. A base coat, which is a direct to rust paint, and also a clear coat. But before that, I need to clean off all the dust and grease from the parts. Now that that's done, we can begin painting. It was pretty windy outside, so I had to keep the spray can pretty close when I was painting. But that's alright, because I managed to get an even coat. And this is just one layer. I am applying this paint in two layers on both sides. For this larger hole, I just crumpled up some paper towels and filled them. Especially on these tight-fitting components, it's important not to let any spray paint go into those holes. This repainting process feels like a reward after my efforts. Since I spent so long in my dusty, smelly workshop from all the chemicals, I really enjoyed doing this. It feels like I'm breathing new life into the machine and that is just a great feeling because as an engineer I hate to work with products that are designed to fail and most of our products nowadays are not designed to last more generations than one. So that's why it feels so nice to restore something that's over a hundred years old. Since you've managed to make it this far into the video, I would like to ask you to subscribe if you enjoyed what you've seen so far, because there's lots more to come. I also bought a sewing machine that fits perfectly with this table and I've also bought some hardwood that I'm going to be building my zinger table out of. So this is the first part of a three-part series in which I'm trying to build a zinger sewing machine that can actually do some work. Don't get me wrong, I love my new heavy-duty sewing machine also from zinger but it's made with subpar components and from mostly plastic parts and I really want to have a sewing machine that can last a generation or two. 
when you're spray painting these legs it is important to do it in many directions because there are lots of small nooks and crannies that the paint has to get into so this is why you can see me moving around around all four sides of the leg because it is important to cover every single surface so that rust doesn't penetrate anywhere and this will make sure that my paint job will last each paint layer takes about an hour's worth of time to dry in the sun so I'm painting one side then leaving them to dry for an hour and then flipping them over and doing the other side meanwhile the other parts are drying on another table after the black paint it's on to the clear coat All in all, the entire paint job took about an hour or two hours of work and about six hours of waiting. But now that that's done, we can move back to the workshop, where everything has been magically cleaned up. I'm laying all the large components out on the table, but I didn't mention what I did with the smaller parts. I actually soaked them in phosphoric acid for about a day or two. And here you go, they are all cleaned up and looking shiny. I found that phosphoric acid works great for removing rust and grease. Now let's see if I can remember how these pieces fit together. This is going to be a serious challenge. I wanted to get the hardest challenge out of the way, so assembling the flywheel was first on the list. And thankfully, getting the shaft back in place was way easier than getting it out. Now I'm working backwards, so the next on the list is assembling the crank. I'm gonna put all these components in place as I found them. They look a bit nasty, but I didn't really want to replace any of them because I wouldn't know if I got the fit right and I didn't want to replace any of the original components. So these old pieces of wood are still gonna chug on and if they break in the future that's fine I can fix them anytime I want to. Now let's move on to the frame. The frame is held together by just four nuts and bolts so I'm gonna screw them together and then tighten them down with an allen wrench. I didn't want to paint any of these small nuts and bolts since that would mess up the threads and they still need some rust protection so I'm going to smear them with some machinist oil and hopefully that will be enough to prevent oxidation. I've placed the flywheel into the assembly. It connects here with a cone-shaped sleeve and here with the nut and the bolt. The bolt needs to be twisted in from this direction and then you can fix it in place by this stop nut which gave me so much trouble on the disassembly. Here you can see me attaching the guide for the belt. This is a fixed guide, the other side there is a movable guide. I'm not sure what that's for but I think that I will figure it out by the time I build a table for the sewing machine part. These just attach with one bolt and one nut, so they are pretty simple to put on the machine. Now for the pedal. The crank attaches to the pedal using this knob. Then you can attach the pedal to the frame with these two holes. These are, again, the conically shaped bearing replacement bolts and they slide in bronze material so that there won't be that much friction. So I'm making sure to lubricate everything nicely and then twist the bolts in place. At this point I realized I made a huge mistake. I put the crank on backwards and now I need to disassemble the whole thing and put it back together the right way around. But thankfully since the construction is pretty simple it only took me about 20 minutes to reassemble everything. Now it's the right way around, but I still need to flip the pedal. 
So I flip the pedal around and I'm making sure that the crank is where the knob on the pedal is. So the orientation is really important. Now let's attach the crank to the knob. It's basically the same attach bond as on top, but here we have a pin that fixes the shaft of the pedal in place so that it doesn't wiggle loose. Since this is a moving part and it has some wiggle room, that means that there needs to be some other type of connection so that it doesn't wiggle out of place. And that's why this washer is needed and that's why the pin is needed. And the pin is just press fit in place, so I'm going to hammer it in as best as I can. This is the point where I can fix the movement of the machine. There is some lateral wiggle room on the crank, but that's okay since it really needs to transfer the force of the pedal in a linear motion. So that is not much of a concern. Now I'm fitting the basket in place to keep the wheel secure and to keep the belt from popping off. It's also one of the rare safety features of the machine, so that the crank doesn't bump up against your leg. And here you can observe the precision to which these were cast. There's less than a couple millimeters of movement. Now for the last piece. Now the machine is rebuilt. Every component is where it should be, but wait, I have one more addition. As I was preparing for this project, I looked at a lot of sewing machines and I think that I've managed to find the original design. And on that design, the letters Zinger and also the border of the Zinger logo is marked in gold. So, I have these. These are little gold pens and I'm going to go over all the little details that need to be painted gold. But I'm gonna do that off camera because I want to reward myself with some peace and quiet. So I'm gonna listen to some music, put on a good movie and paint the machine. And after that, I can finally show you the beauty shots. It was rusty, crusty and disgusting. And this is where I ended up. It's shiny, sparkly and works great. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. This was a really tough project and I think that I managed to do a great job. If you enjoyed this type of content, please subscribe for more. Other than that, see you next time. Bye bye.